In this part we have a look at radial layouts of trees, which look like this. Where do we actually use them? Mainly for drawings of phylogenetic trees, but also for drawing the family trees or for code structures. In general, whenever we have many, many, many leaves that have to be placed around not so few inner vertices, then it makes sense to use a radial layout so we have more space for those leaves here. If we do it in a hierarchical way, then all these have to be placed next to each other and that takes much more space than placing them on a circle. So what are the drawing conventions and aesthetics we want to do? For the conventions we want the vertices to lie on circular layers according to the depth. That's similar to the layered style, but there the layers were horizontal, here they are circles from inside outside. And we want the drawing to be planar. And for the aesthetics, here we want to do something completely different. We want to optimize the distribution of the vertices. But how can we do that? How can an algorithm optimize the distribution of vertices? Let's have a look at a very simple attempt of an algorithm. The idea is that for every subtree, we want to reserve some area of the circle. And the area we want to reserve corresponds to the size of the subtree. So if you are at this position here, then we look at the size of u and it gets some area proportional to the size. Again, as in the previous section, we can simply compute the size of all the subtrees by going with a post order traversal through the tree. And now this subtree u should get some area, that is the size of it, divided by the size of this parent minus one. So basically if we have many children here, then each subtree gets some area proportional to the size of it. And we want to place the parent of the subtree in the middle of the area. Let's have a look at an example. We start with our circles here, I spread them out far now so that we can see something. We place the root in the middle and now we have two subtrees. This one has size 1, this one has size 9. So the area of the circle we give to this subtree is 1 tenth and the area for this subtree is 9 tenth. We place both these vertices in the middle of this area. So this one is in the middle here, this one is in the middle here and we connect them to the root by a straight line edge. Now here we don't have to continue but at number 9 we have to. Again we have two subtrees. This one here has size 1, this is 7, so this one gets 1 eighth of what is left here. And the other one gets 7 eighth. So the area for this subtree is this part of the circle, we place it in the middle, for this one is here. And we connect them again with a straight line edge. We continue, this is size 1, so it gets 1 sixth of what is left here which is over there, we place it in the middle, the other one in the middle here, and we connect them. But now we have a problem, because now we volatile our drawing convention that the drawing has to be planar. So this algorithm does not exactly work every time. So we have to adjust it a little bit. Let's have a closer look at the situation. How can we avoid crossings? Let's say we are currently in this area, and when we place P over here, then we get a crossing like this. In the case where we get a crossing, we want to find some place where we are sure that there cannot be a crossing at all. So we want to find some part of this circle here where we can definitely place P without getting a crossing. How do we get this? So let's first connect the root to our vertex U to the parent. Now we take the line that's orthogonal to this connection, which looks like this. We have this part here between the intersections of the orthogonal line with the circle that we want to place P on. This is completely inside the yellow area. If we place our vertex P here, then we cannot get any intersection with another edge because everything inside here is only between these two layers. Here the problem is we go back, we go through this layer, we find an older edge that's between two older layers and then we get a crossing. 
Here we are only move between the layer of U and the layer of P. And then we are totally fine. As soon as we move to the other side of this red dotted edge, we move like this, we will enter the space between these two layers. So the only way we stay only between these two layers is that we place P somewhere on this red circular arc. So let's just move it here. We want to formalize this a little bit. So let's say tau of u is that the angle that we get from this wedge that corresponds to u. If we take half of this angle, we get this triangle here. So the number of nodes in the subtree rooted is u as l of u. That's what we defined earlier. And let's say that the radius of layer i is rho i. So this here has radius rho i, this is radius rho i plus 1, and so on. If we take the cosinus of this angle, then it's the ratio of this edge here, which goes to layer i, so it has length rho i, and the edge to this layer here, which has length rho i plus 1. So the cosine of this angle here is rho i divided by rho i plus 1. So the whole angle here that we want to use to get the circular arc is 2 times arc cosine rho i divided by rho i plus 1. But we have to make sure that it stays inside this yellow region, inside the region that we reserved for this vertex u. So it's actually the minimum of what we compute here and the size of u divided by the size of v minus 1. There's an alternative way to say this that we will also use in our pseudocode on the next page, which is we specify the minimum angle and the maximum angle that we can use to place the children of u. So the minimum angle that we can use is the angle that we assigned to u minus arc cosine of this, and the maximum is the whole thing plus arc cosine of this. Let's try to write down the algorithm. So our input for the radial tree layout is a tree with a root, and we have the radii of our circles. We again first want to do a post-order and then a pre-order. That's what we also did for the layer drawings. And then we return for every vertex the polar coordinates. So what is the distance to the root, and what is the angle, which is this angle here. What do we do in the post-order and then the pre-order traversal? First, in the post-order, we just find what is the size of every vertex. So we start in a vertex, we give it size 1, and then for each child we recursively calculate the size and add it. And if we want to be a bit more formal, we recursively call post order, and now the size of v is the size of itself plus the size of the subtree. So this is the easy part, but the main work we do in this pre-order here. The input for our pre-order traversal is a vertex v, the layer t that we want to place it on, and the minimum angle and the maximum angle in which it can be placed. So here in this example, it would be vertex u, the layer is i, the minimum angle is this, the maximum angle is this. And now we've assigned first the position to it, so the distance to the root is the radius of the layer, and the angle is in the middle of these maximal angles. So that's basically the output that we get from the algorithm. Now what we still have to do is, for all the children, we have to again recursively call this pre-order, so that means we have to figure out for each of them what is their layer, what is the minimum angle, and what is the maximum angle we assign to the subtree. If we are not in the root, then first we want to take this minimum and maximum angle and we want to restrict it like we had on the previous page. We only want to use parts of the circle where we are sure we don't get any crossings. So for the minimum angle we check, is it far away enough or do we have to restrict it to the angle of V minus R cosine of rho t divided by rho t plus 1 and the same for the maximum angle. Then, when we have our valid angle range, we look at all our children and for each of them we assign a portion of this angle range that's proportional to their size. So we take as current left boundary, our minimum angle, and then we go through all the children. We want to recursively tell them what is my angle range. 
the minimum angle the first child gets is this left here, so it starts at the beginning, and the maximum angle, we call it right, is the left angle plus a portion of the whole angle range we have that's uh, proportional to the size of the subtree. So these are our minimum and maximum angle, and we know that the layer it will be placed in is t plus 1. So we can recursively call the function with t plus 1 left and right for the child w. And then for the next child, we start again where the for previous child left. So our new left boundary basically is the right boundary of the old one. And if we do this for all the children, then this whole angle range that we used has been partitioned into angle ranges for the children, and we're done. What is the runtime of this algorithm? Well, what do we do? We have a post-order traversal here. We know in the post-order traversal we can do a linear time. We have a pre-order traversal here, and everything we do here takes just constant time. These are just some basic computations. And this here, again, just basic computations. It's just a pre-order with some additional constant steps in every step. So this also takes linear time, and that's it. So the whole thing is just linear. How can we prove that it is correct? That's basically what we did on the previous slide. Here we showed that if we just use this part, then we cannot get any crossings. So we immediately get this gives us a planar drawing, and we have proven runtime and correctness. Let's formulate the result. We have a tree with n vertices. Then the radial tree layout algorithm constructs a linear time at drawing, such that we get a radial drawing. The vertices lie on circles according to the depth. And the area is quadratic in the maximum degree times the height of t. So you take the height of the tree, which is just the longest root leaf path, you multiply it with maximum degree of a vertex, and then you square the whole thing. Then you get the area. If you want to see how we get this area bound, you can read this part in the book. It's a bit too technical for here. It's more interesting how this drawing looks like. There are countless of other tree visualization styles, way too many to cover here in this lecture. But if you want to have a look at some of them, I suggest you to look at the book of trees by Manuel Lima or to look at treevis.net where you can get a bunch of other examples. In the final two parts of the lecture, we want to have a look at serious parallel graphs. We want to define them and then get our first drawing algorithm for them.